Hi, um, I'm Sam Hamer, and basically what I thought I'd do was um, start reviewing um, tutorials. Um, this is just sort of a test thing to get used to um, using software again for doing the tutorials I used to do in my work and teaching. Um, so it's just kind of like a starting point. Um, it helps uh, me uh, look at best ways of presenting things. Anyway, right. So um, as you can see, this is the um, what you get um, when you first come into um, Side Effects Houdini. And this is obviously the Apprentice version, so anyone can get hold of it and um, and start learning some incredibly powerful software. Um, so what I'm going to do is now flip into the tutorial, which I was last looking at on here, and just give it a go again, basically. Um, and I looked at a more recent tutorial on interface by another guy, and it, it was really, really, really good. So I'm just going to close this down, and uh, which didn't include any actually creating any objects, which was just taken around the interface. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to that. So let's just go back to what I was doing before. So what I was doing before was just sort of playing this tutorial for you. So. so it was just literally doing stuff like this. So um, just classic navigation, like so. And it should key log everything, so it should I should be able to bring up all your the keystrokes and mouse movements for you. Um, so the other thing I wanted to sort of pick up on what he was doing um, was like you've got these tabs here. Um, I can't remember. I'll need to go back through his to just pick up on all the different little bits. Yeah, color settings. So the classic thing. And most of the stuff you can probably like figure out anyway just from poking around. But things like this can seem quite intimidating if you you've not um, you're you're new to it all basically. And obviously that just changes. Pro. Okay, so we'll close that, and we got things like this. Um, so and it, I can't remember where it went for the other. Anyway, yeah. So the, this this other tutorial, it, it it's basically it's um, and, and and to be completely frank, um, if you do that, it tells you what you kind of need to do. I know on the initial tutorial, which did at least create an object and you spun around it, which we're going to do in a sec, um, it forgot to mention certain keystrokes like using T to go back to to um, translate effectively from scale. And another bit which you'll probably be really, really frigging useful to to find out. Where were we? Where was the... Uh I'll get into the preferences before. That was annoying. I did it before. It should be edit preferences. Oh, there we go. And it's in here handled because that was another thing I found like really, really annoying. You need an object up first, and I'll come back to that to be able to do it. And um, yeah, so if you've got certain you've got objects, depending on how far you in on. The screen, etc. Um, you might want to extend the handle so it's easier just to translate objects and do stuff with them. Right. So um, they're the, all the basic movements. So what I'm going to do is like tab, and I find this a really annoying because it does stuff like that. So you've got to kind of like do tab very quick and press T, S T, and then you can see you've got some test geometry. Um, I'm using the down button, press Enter, then Enter again to put it the origin of the scene if it can be bothered. Come on. Voila, it takes a bit longer. And that, that's probably because I'm recording this video, the, the two video streams effectively as well as doing this. So there you go, you got it. Now, what you, what you do, you think, all oh, right, maybe I can start moving around this. 
Um, as long as I don't press these bits here, I can move around the scene like I was before. Wrong, it moves the object. So I'll classically control Z puts you back. So you've got to press space bar, or so the minute you do that, it tells you anyway what you need to want to do. You know, left mouse tumbles, middle pan, so it gives you a clue. So if I do that, now I can move around the object. I can sort of zoom out like that, which is kind of what I really want to do. And as you notice, the Okay, so, and the classic thing, so I made, I made the, the handles really big. So this is what I'm gonna show you about the handles. So we go into preferences again, and we go into the handles section. If they're too small, the annoying bit I found in here as well is like, there isn't a just, press a button and it resets to the default value, which is really annoying. So yeah, so if you do this, and it's not interactive straight away, so you won't be able to see the results of it until you accept, and it shrinks, see? So if these are a bit in, and it's hard to grab hold, it's like this one, I can just about get out of there. Because I was having fun of getting hold of things before, you can adjust. Like I said, edit preferences. They're normally in the same places as you find preferences in any other programs, to be completely frank. Um, so, uh, blah, 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 handles. And I am going to bring them up a little bit because I actually find it useful just to have them sticking out a bit more. Anyway, I can't remember whether I did. Uh, anyway, Control V, Control C. Uh, but that's moved up front, you see, which I didn't want to do. So um, what I'm going to do is just come around here a bit. See, I wanted to just move that out. So if you press T, it plonks it into translate mode. But it's still not doing it around the axis properly. Um, which I had before. So that's why, see? Y, Z, X, Y, Z. I just want X. Right, found it. Voila. If I didn't copy it, so let's just undo that. So control. And now it's moving across the axis. So that's sometimes where the hand, like zoomfin up the handles comes in really, 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 really useful. But it just makes grabbing hold of them properly. Yeah. So if I undo the move, and if I increase that, so I've got that there, that gives X, Y, but I've got to that there. See? You just can make it a little bit easier to, to do that again. I will increase the handle even more and you'll get kind of what I'm going on about a bit better handle, so it's really quite wamp them up, except. So, space. And then I can see it there. I could have done it that way anyway. But that means it's like, depending on the object itself as well, it means I can just go like that and then form and take it along that line. But it's up to you, it's how you want it. It just can be really handy if you've got especially complex objects or something or complex shapes etc so right so what we want to do is scale as well so that's actually e like that and then you get another little box so you want to go come out and go like that so you can scale it better it's because i've done the handles a bit and this is where the application scaling handles better even if you've increased them to be able to go up hold and move it it should be a bit more proportionate. It should kind of self-adjust when I've been other applications. It's kind of, let's take it down by that much. It's pretty much self-adjusted. So we want X, Y, Z. So he's gonna, the little rubber thingy majig, he's gonna grow quite big in that direction. So we'll take that on there and do, control C, control V, 
and then what we want is that just purely that axis ah but guess what we were we were in that mode say so you have to press t and this is what was missing in a, a previous tutorial was the fact that um the toggle between t and e so t is translate e is expand contract i assume is the logic and to be honest look again it's a clever little thing like most apps you roll over it tells you it tells you what you want if there's any shortcuts or again classically edit preferences and go in here um and let me go hotkeys and hotkeys itself will bring up the menu. I found this a little bit weird coming into this, but like we'll click on Houdini. Okay, so let's look up cut. And it is a classic alt, depending on what it is. We'll cancel out of that. Okay, so we've got that. And then what we can do now is we go, we go space bar A. And it's, it kind of like centers everything in there. Space bar F zooms into the object, spacebar H takes you to home, basically. So that's kind of like the home view. And that, that, that was nice and neat, wasn't it? <laughs> basically chuck them all together, pretty cool and groovy. Um, I would say, yeah, there's, there's lots of stuff that's logical. And then what I'll do is when this other guy's tutorial, I'll, I'll start actually putting it together and not more neat, neatly include, well, kind of like, squidging a couple of tutorials together in one basically from another couple of people as i'm learning myself and um right i think that'll do for the moment actually because i think that's as much as i think she did in her tutorial so we just go back into that and we'll skip along skip 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 to do our day yeah i think she got to the I do love the accent though. The view tool is active by defaulting Houdini.